How about if we do a show at Know the Cause on the pro of probiotics? Dr. Michael Smith, he's a medical doctor with Life Extension. He joins me this morning. And we're gonna be talking about how stress, food, and pesticides affect our gut. I mean, it's really that simple. Love being with Dr. Smith. Also, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what is the deal with infertility? Where was it when we were kids? Why is it huge today? I have a hypothesis that I'm gonna share with you. And of course, folks, don't worry. Into the kitchen we go with Abby. Mwah. All that and more on today's Know the Cause. Today's Know the Cause is brought to you by Life Extension. Stay healthy, live better. My name is Doug Kaufman. For the past 40 years, I've dedicated my life and even my career to finding the root cause of disease. Join me and a team of physicians, pharmacists, and scientists. And soon you too will know the cause. Friends, everybody knows the word antibiotic. How many of you really know the word probiotic? What are the pros of probiotics, right? There's 10 times more bacteria in our bodies than human cells. Think about how much bacteria that is and what the good can do for you as we talk to Dr. Mike Smith about the pros of probiotics. Thank you for coming in, appreciate yeah, you. always a pleasure. By now this audience knows and loves you. Yeah. Uh, he is a spokesman for uh, Life Extension, a company that yeah, we so much fun. love. I'm so telling much you, fun. and this is this is one of my favorite topics, actually. Probiotics. Yeah, yeah, I mean, who would have thought that these bacteria could do so much for our bodies? Not just about gut health, you know. Did you in medical school? Did they use the word oh, probiotic? No, no, you know? no. It was antibiotic. <laughs> we had to kill everything in medical school. <laughs> no, this is some. This is you know, this industry is just yeah. growing. Yeah, yeah. Leaps and bounds. There's lots of great research coming out. This is now respected by yeah, gastroenterologists, yeah. by big colleges. Do you take a probiotic? Like yes, a base? Yeah. take a probiotic. Well, I, I want to start with that because here, there's, the, here's an interesting story, right? And this is kind of something that uh, Life Extension is kind of leading the way in. And, 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 and I want, people need to take a probiotic, take a basic probiotic. But here's the problem. The stress that we live in today, that that go-go yep. you know, lifestyle. Right, gotta win, gotta win, Some of the win. foods yeah. that we're eating, some of the, the pesticides we're exposed to, those types of things really favor the bad guys, the bad bacteria in your gut. And, and so we, we need to do things. It's not just about taking a basic probiotic. We need to change some of that lifestyle stuff. We need to eat cleaner. We need to do things to reduce stress, right? Mm -hmm. We need to avoid those toxins in our environment as much as we can, right? It's kind of hard living in today's world. But even if you do all that, Doug, and, and you take a basic probiotic, there's a good chance that those probiotics, those good ones, really don't have a chance because those bad guys are so entrenched based on all that stuff I just mentioned. Our lifestyles. Yeah. yeah. So Life Extension is now introducing something else to our probiotic, and it's called a bacteriophage. Oh. Now, are you familiar with no. bacteria? So bacteriophages, it, was, it used to be known as phage technology. P-H-A-G-E. Yeah, right. yeah. It, right. you know, it developed uh, in Eastern Europe and Russia. Uh, before we had antibi uh, antibiotics. And this is how we used to oh. treat infections. A bacteriophage is, and this is just the easiest way for me to explain this. It's like a virus to a bacteria. Okay. And it's very specific to, to specific bad ones. So what we've done is we've taken a collection of these bacteriophages, there's four of them. We added it to that product there. That's our main probiotic formula. We added the bacteriophages to that. Yep. And when you take this, those bacteriophages kind of clear out those bad guys for us because they attack the bad guys. And that now allows the good ones to really come in and now we're gonna start seeing really good benefit from a healthier, balanced microbiome in our gut. So back to that, it's something new and you're gonna see more about bacteriophages. It's beyond just good bacteria. When I hear probiotic, I hear good bacteria. Right. You know, that, that defends you against the bad guys. Yeah. So this it, it, is more. This things. is more, and, and my point being, th those bad guys are just, everything we do supports their growth. Sure. And just because you take a probiotic, that's good, it's a good start, but you may be, you're, you know, you're not really rebalancing towards the good ones, they just don't have a chance. Yeah, and you're, you're taking this a step further, and I kind of like that. You asked me if I took a probiotic, and uh, I do normally. Sometimes I'll go a week without a probiotic, but I never thought 
maybe a glass of wine, maybe your lifestyle, maybe the birth control Stuff pill, like maybe that. drugs yeah. you're on, you know, are contributing to the bad guys overgrowing. Right. So, the, so these phages. Yeah, the phage, it's called phage technology. We're really excited about it. We're really the first company to bring this out. And I, I, I think it's really how we need to take probiotics now. And I noticed there isn't a bottle of probiotics. Can you be point specific with some of these phases? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, you can. And then that's where the technology and the research is gonna lead us to, where we're actually gonna be using maybe these uh, phages, these bacteriophages, to actually treat things that antibiotics are having a hard time treating now. That's the potential here. Yeah. And that's really important in today's age because we have a lot of resistance out there, right? Antibiotic resistance. Yeah. I think even pediatric associations, basically we're kind of admitting, gosh, we've been maybe using them too much. And that's where probiotics come in. And folks, this show with Life Extension is going a step beyond probiotics. They're talking about not only phages that they're using in this new technology, but point specific. You know, are there, for example, bad guys affecting your brain and your mood, you know? So when we get back from this break, we'll yeah. continue with Dr. Mike Smith. By the way, uh, he is a medical doctor. He is a spokesperson for this great company that we just love called Life yeah, Extension. Extension. I guess three years we've been together. Now. Yeah, this is it's it's a, third or three or four years. Yeah, yep. yeah. We're going to have to get married soon. This is good. <laughs> we're here uh, with no, we Dr. Don't. Smith. We'll no, be we right back with more of Know the Cause and continue talking about phages. What are those? Stay tuned. Dr. Mike Smith joins me again. We're talking about Life Extension's products. They're adding phages to their probiotics. So I'm a little bit lost there. Okay. Is this bacterial phages or is this something else? So the bacteriophage is something that's found in nature. Okay. And they are like a virus to a bacteria. So it's not the bacteria. It's like a virus uh, that will, like, like, let's say, attach to a really bad strain of E. coli in your gut. Mm -hmm. And it could actually get rid of that strain. So it's kind of clearing the field so that when you take the probiotic on top of that, you really are kind of reseeding, rebalancing towards health. So, so a bacteriophage is not a bacteria. Okay. It's a different thing, but it helps to clear out the bad guys so the good guys can actually make an impact on you. And we still call these probiotics because there yeah. are good bacteria. Yeah, it's in. probiotic plus right. the phages. Okay, yeah. okay, that's Combination. interesting. It's the new, it's, you're gonna see more of that, you will. I think you're right. I think you guys are really starters, yeah. you know, in the industry. We are, we, we take a lot of pride in that. This is a trend company. Yeah. And therefore, I wanna go down the list because probiotics, you know, are probiotics. But there's four bottles here. <laughs> so, so teach, and by the way, let me just You can do math, Doug, right. that's great, that's great. <laughs> One, two, you can count. Um, <laughs> let me just tease you a little bit. I don't know how much these are, nor do you have to worry about it. It's 50% yeah. off today, it's half off. And you know, once you call in, you subscribe, it's a free gift to that monthly magazine. I mean, this company is really trendsetters and mm -hmm. really have it squared away. I love that magazine. So there's yeah. your phage, probiotic right. and phage. The next one is mood, florist mood. I know, is it, that's, wow. if you think about it, there are certain strains of probiotics that can make you feel better, that can help you lift up your mood when you need that, that can calm you down when you need it. And it's, it's known as the, the, the gut-brain connection. Sure. Maybe you've heard some yeah, of this. Sure. Um, you know, some of the research initially was, was looking at how in, in, when you're an embryo and you're developing, the brain and the gut kind of come from the same tissue, and then they separate along this tube, right? Wow. So they are, they are, in a sense, anatomically connected. However, that's not really what's going on here. What we've discovered is that if you have certain probiotics, certain good ones in your gut, they can actually influence brain chemistry. They can influence the production of feel-good neurotransmitters. They can, they can help ease brain inflammation, all that kind of stuff we wanna do. So yes, there is this in interesting embryological connection, but it's really the gut microbes. It's really the good guys in your gut can actually influence a good mood. I mean, it's amazing when you think about it. So this. different bacteriophages will work better in different areas well, not, for now, different the, tissues. Not bacteriophages, now that's different. The bacteriophages are in that first product. That, Just that one. The, yeah, what okay. we're talking about now, there are a couple of strains, specific strains of probiotics we have in this product that improve mood by helping to improve brain chemistry because of that wow. connection. Wow, it, it, who'd have thought? It blows your mind when you it's really, really think about advanced. it. It's really advanced. Yeah. I mean, it's really yeah. advanced. Maybe you have a mood problem. I mean, why today? Why today wouldn't you purchase this and yeah. give it a try for a month or two? That one's an awesome one. Okay. Florcist Immune. Yeah. This is another probiotic product. 
Uh, this is powerful. What th The collection, I think there's like five probiotics in here, and they're very specific strains, right? And they've all been shown to improve the production of a very important antibody in your, in your system called IgA. It's the secretory antibody. This is the antibody that coats all of the potential entry zones for viruses and bacteria. Mucous membrane. All yeah. of that, yeah. By taking that product, you're, you're revving up those frontline defenses that's... with that coat of armor, the IgA. So that's, I got, I, when, that, when we formulated that one, I was all over it. I take that every day, I really, because I travel a lot. Yeah, yeah, you're on, on airplane. I was just yeah. on, coming here, I was just <laughs> on the plane. Everybody was hacking and coughing yeah. and touching and da 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 da. So very important. I have I had that on board and I feel protected and I know my IgA levels are up. Yeah. So yeah. we'll discuss that sometime. The five antibodies. But okay. So this one. Heart health. Yeah. Is that, think about so think about this. So this now we have a probiotic that can actually improve lipid profiles. Yeah. Cholesterol, triglycerides bring down inflammation, all that stuff. So that's a, a heart health probiotic. I mean, this is the whole body benefit of probiotic. I mean, it's amazing where the research is going and we're right on the front line. Yeah, they are trendsetters, life extension. Thank you for coming in and continuing our education. This is the phages with the probiotic. That's the basic gut These one. These are different, point specific. For, for specific bacteria. conditions, yep. Okay, good. Uh, that's life extension, folks. Everything today, Dr. Mike Smith, half off. Call in, try one. I'm going to try all four of these. Go for it. I mean, I have a brain and a heart. I'm a, <laughs> you thank you for coming in this morning. <laughs> thank you, Doug. You appreciate back. it. We'll be right back. Physician Greg Emerson, all the way from Brisbane, Australia, now talks to us a little bit about our water supply. Something wrong with it? And if not our water, what in the world is causing all this infertility? Watch this. This is why I don't drink fluoridated tap water. One, it tastes like water from a swimming pool. Two, fluoride is a known thyroid toxin. And three, it interferes with electron transport in our mitochondria. It's this movement of electrons which stimulates the production of ATP in the mitochondria. Low ATP means low energy. Remember, the only reason that fluoride is added to our water is because the system does not trust us to eat the right food and have a good oral health program. So prove them wrong. Take responsibility. This is Dr. Greg Emerson with Doug Kaufman at Know The Cause Studios in the great state of Texas. A couple of years ago, I was giving a lecture in Oklahoma City, and there was probably 300 people in there. At the end of the lecture, people kind of line up to ask me questions. I love that. One wonderful 20-something couple came up with a baby, and the mother began crying as they came up to talk to me. And I said, are you okay? Are you sick? And I'm thinking, oh, no, tell me she doesn't have cancer. And the husband said, no, we were infertile. We'd gone through all the infertility classes, all the expensive shots. We'd been through everything. And then we read a book. Dr. Dave Holland and I wrote a book 15 years ago uh, called The Fungus Link to Infertility. And we referenced plenty of scientific research that said infertility is a fungus problem. And here was a couple that gave up on all the high tech, changed their diet, found some antifungals, and she now had a six, nine-month-old baby, and she was tearing up. God is amazing, right? Sometimes he still uses wretches like me to get his work done. So let's talk a little bit about this disease in America called infertility. Why not consider your diet and a fungal poison called xerelinone? Folks, this is a tough one. I've taught you about aflatoxin. I've talked, uh, talked to you about vomitoxin. Xerelinone is, I think, going to turn out to be one of the most poisonous mycotoxins ever found. And it's a fusarium mold byproduct. It's a poison made by fusarium. Wait a minute, doesn't that grow on our corn? Don't cows eat the corn and chickens? Does that pass through their bloodstream and we eat eggs, we eat chicken, and we eat beef? Okay, let's go. Xerelinone, a fusarium mold poison. A mycotoxin is a poisonous product made by a mold. This I thought was so great. Uh, Dr. Pitt, I've spoken with him a couple of times. He's out of Australia. Its importance as a mycotoxin lies in its estrogenic properties. 
as it causes a variety of reproductive disorders in female farm animals. Some hormonal effects occasionally seen in girls may have been associated with xerelinone intake. Wow. Precocious puberty. Weight gain. Early menses. I mean, this is an estrogenic... Gee, so many breast cancers are coming back now with estrogen-receptive breast cancer. Where are we getting all this excess estrogen? Is it just corn? Let's keep going. Let's keep going. <clears throat> Xerelinone causes mammalian infertility. Cows are mammals, were mammals, and yet no fertility that I'm aware of in the world. No fertility. By the way, when I was a kid, there was no infertility centers. Now they're billion-dollar centers. Ooh, we'll take your eggs, mix it with your sperm, and then put it back inside you. Okay, sometimes that works, thank God, and the chi uh, the, a child is born to a loving family. Most of the times, it doesn't. And these poor parents, they're on their knees. Lord, please, we want a child. And they look in the newspapers and online of these people that beat their kids and burn their kids. We would love our kids. Why can't we have one? Please consider this. This is biblical. You know, Moses told, or the Lord told Moses and Aaron, I give you Canaan and it's your possession. If I put a spreading mildew mold in a house in that land, you need to tell the high priest why. This mildew was a fungus that could spread and cause disease. No medical book says that, but plenty of Bibles say that. Isn't that amazing? And so once again, we're opening clinics that address the effect instead of the cause. Okay? It's not just linked to infertility. In his book, Mycotoxins, Professor John F. Leslie states that xerelinone might be the culprit when it comes to fully understanding polycystic ovarian syndrome, which many infertile couples or women have. In animals, xerelinone introduces hyperestrogenic syndrome, vulvovaginitis, enlarged uteri, enlarged nipples, and ovarian cysts. Uh, I've got to tell you, folks, a derivative of this mycotoxin is called Ralgro. Ralgro. And we give it to our cows, not in the European Union, but in North America only. We give it to our cows. The danger, I think, is we're seeing more and more estrogen-linked uh, cancers the more Ralgro or Xeranol we put in these meat products. Why is that allowed? Are we a Petri dish where they're experimenting with us? I don't know the answers to that, nor do I know if Ralgro is really the problem. Be careful with fungal poisons. And if you're infertile, please consider looking at mold in your food supply as a possible cause. Now, into the kitchen we go with Abby. Listen, after you watch this quinoa hot breakfast, after you watch this, raise your left hand if you want to go back to the cabinet and eat regular cereal. Your right hand if you want to start eating this way. Right hands up. Hi, welcome. My name's Abby, and I'm here today to show you how to make a quinoa breakfast cereal. This is something that I've come up with myself. Uh, I've eaten it a lot of times, especially when it's cold out, and you want something a little bit different than just normal eggs and bacon or something like that. Um, it's a basic quinoa recipe. There's not a whole lot to it, but you can adjust it for however you want to eat it, and it really just depends on your taste and what you prefer. Now, I've already got some quinoa cooking in here. It's just started. It's a third a cup quinoa and two thirds cup water. And I already rinsed off the quinoa in the sink in a strainer. It really gets rid of a lot of the nutty, kind of dirty flavor that quinoa can take on. So if you rinse it off really well and then put it in the bowl, it works a lot better. Now we're gonna let this simmer for, it's gonna take about 10 minutes to simmer. And once it does, it'll be fully cooked, but we'll have a little bit extra liquid at the bottom. And the reason you want to have a little bit extra liquid at the bottom is because we're going to add some ingredients that really soak up a lot of water. So that'll keep it kind of a creamy texture. And that's going to cook for a little while. And once it cooks down, we'll go ahead and start adding extra things. And we've got our quinoa cooked and ready to go. It's got just a tiny little bit of liquid left. And actually, it had to cook a little bit longer, so most of the liquid is done. So what we're going to do just gonna leave it on the stove and we're gonna add just a little bit of coconut milk. We're gonna let that heat back up. So that way the coconut milk keeps it all hot because this is a hot cereal. 
And this is Kaufman 1. So everything's antifungal, phase one, everything's good to go. So you don't have to worry about that. And the first thing that we're gonna add is about two tablespoons of flax meal. Now you wanna make sure you use ground flax meal. Uh, you can use whole flax meal, but it's gonna be really crunchy. And if you really like that kind of crunch, that's fine, but this tends to blend in a lot easier with the quinoa itself. So we'll go ahead and add that in. And give that a quick little stir. And you're gonna notice that the flax meal is gonna absorb a lot of liquid really quickly. And so we've got that in. We're gonna go ahead and put in some of our sweeteners. And again, like I said, I like to use cinnamon, so I've got about a tablespoon of cinnamon here, so I'm gonna go ahead and add that in. And I've got just under a tablespoon of pure xylitol. And you can use whatever sweetener you want. I like xylitol because it mixes pretty well. Um, and it's, it's kind of equivalent to a sugar ratio, so if you're used to cooking with sugar, you can substitute this for this, and it's much healthier, and it's Kaufman 1 approved. So we'll go ahead and mix that together. Okay, and now we're gonna go ahead and add about a tablespoon of almond butter. And you wanna make sure when you're buying almond butter that you really look at the label, because some brands will put a lot of additives in their almond butter. Like they'll put sugar or extra fillers to make it thicker. So you wanna make sure you're getting just pure almond butter. So that way you don't have to worry about any extra chemicals or anything like that. Again, we'll go ahead and mix that in. And this gives it a really nice, super smooth, creamy texture. And it's, it makes it really good. And now we'll go ahead and place that in a bowl. Okay. And from there, you can add any kind of toppings you want. I've got an option of nuts. We've got almond slivers that you can buy prepackaged, already cut up, so you don't have to worry about doing that. Or you can add whole almonds if you want. And I've also got chopped up walnuts. And I'm gonna add these because I really like walnuts. So just a handful of those, however much you want. As little or as much as you want, it's not a big deal. And then we've also got fruit options. We, berries work really well with it. They mix in really well. We've got option of blueberries, raspberries, or strawberries. I'm gonna go with strawberries today. And now you have a healthy, delicious, hot cereal ready to go. If you want to find this recipe, you can go to knowthecause.com and try it out and let me know what you think and have a great day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>